Seaver. Thanks for joining. All right. It looks like the recording has started, so we'll go ahead and kick things off. Hi, I'm Melissa McGurk. I am one of EDPNC's international trade managers. Welcome to Export Coffee Talk. This is a monthly series that we're starting, and we have two. And we have two main goals um, with this monthly series. First, we want the opportunity to bring information about various aspects of your export journey um, to you in this relaxed environment um, by engaging with experienced professionals. Professionals um, and tapping into their expertise. Uh, secondly, we really want to give you an opportunity to be able to engage with these experts um, and also with one another. We're really encouraging peer to peer interaction. Um, if you're a North Carolina company and you've had experience um, utilizing or um, these particular services today, uh, please offer your uh, lessons learned, your experiences, chime in. Uh, it's not just those people that we invited to speak on the panel uh, that we want to speak. Uh, we want this to really be um, very different than a webinar where you sit and listen. Um, so uh, for those of you that are not familiar with EDPNC's international trade team, um, our goal is to help North Carolina companies reach and succeed in foreign markets. We offer a combination of free services to include consultations with foreign offices and free educational webinars. Uh, we also have a grant program that's designed to help ease the financial lift of our outreach to foreign markets. Um, so if there are any international trade managers um, on the call or team members, can you just take a quick second to chime in and introduce yourselves? I know Blake's on the call there. How have you go first, Blake? <laughs> Sounds good. Good morning, everybody. My name's Blake Jackman. I'm uh, one of the international trade managers, as Melissa said. I cover transportation, uh, aero, auto, and boating and marine, um, as well as a energy, waste and recycling, uh, environmental technology, um, outdoor recreation, sporting goods, and a bunch of other industries as well. So if you fall under any of those categories, feel free to reach out to me and I'll be more than happy to introduce you to all the other services that we provide here. Thank you. Thanks, Blake. Colby? Yes. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Colby Boasson. I am the International Trade Manager for uh, Department of Education. Uh, so you still run that through. I've never used, I've always built my own. I think you're good, Cold Deep. I think we yeah. needed. Yeah. Okay. So I cover the defense sector, I cover the IT sector, security, and some other miscellaneous sectors. Thanks, Cold Deep. And I think that's it for introductions from our team. Um, I'll encourage all of you um, to go to our website um, to um, get their contact information, but um, they could probably put it in the chat window uh, as well. And I did not specify, but as a trade manager on their team, I cover uh, biotechnology, medical equipment, um, and um, chemicals as well. That's my industry. Um, I would like to point out that we have many other um, members of our economic uh, development export ecosystem on the call. There's members from SBTDC, et cetera. So they might be chiming in, but we have a very robust support system for North Carolina companies in North Carolina. Pardon me. Yes, I just said that. Anyway, um, I just want to cover a couple of housekeeping items and then we'll kick things off. Um, as we already stated, the call is being recorded. So we'll be able to circulate that after the fact um, for you to review. Uh, we wanted to also encourage you to um, chime in with questions, put them in the, the chat, et cetera, and um, just, or, uh, just make yourselves um, feel relaxed and, and you can interrupt us at any point in time. Um, I would like to introduce you to today's speaker from the U.S. Commercial Service. Emily Greffi is going to be leading um, our group this morning. She is a senior international trade specialist at the Greensboro U.S. Export Assistance Center. She's currently responsible for assisting U.S. companies located in central North Carolina to increase their exports. She has served as a senior advisor to our nation's foreign policy leaders in the U.S. government for over, over a decade and a half in locations such as Washington, D.C. and in U.S. embassies in many countries to include El Salvador. So Emily, go ahead and take it away. 
Sure. Thank you, Melissa. And thank you very much, EDPNC, for inviting the commercial service and our clients um, to join you today. As I uh, mentioned at the beginning, our format is going to be a little less formal presentation, um, PowerPoints to bore you, and a little more talk show entertainment, um, and of course, information. Um, as, as we're chatting, I know several of you have already uh, put your um, your contact information in the chat. Um, feel free to uh, to continue to add there your your contact information, uh, your organization name, and, and what industry sectors uh, you're with. Uh, I saw from the registration we have companies from aerospace and defense, agribusness, um, our our partners, North Carolina Department of Agriculture as well, consumer products. We have a lot of people from manufacturing. Feel free to be a little more specific about what area of uh, manufacturing that you're in in the chat. Uh, healthcare um, and more. Uh, as Melissa mentioned, a lot of our colleagues and other North Carolina resources are also on the call. So thank you everyone for joining on a beautiful sunny morning here in, uh, in North Carolina. I'm going to give a short overview um, of our organization and then uh, lead a discussion um, and with uh, some of my colleagues and some of the clients that we work with. And we encourage you to ask questions along the way as well. And we'll certainly open it for, for questions at the end of uh, the, the conversation. But who are we? Um, we are the US Department of Commerce. Um, so a federal agency with our headquarters, obviously, in Washington, D.C. It's actually pictured behind me as our headquarters building, about 2,000 people in headquarters um, representing 13 bureaus under the Department of Commerce. Um, we are one of those bureaus, the International Trade Administration. Um, and the International Trade Administration is your U.S. government resource for competing in the global marketplace. EDPNC, Melissa, who was just speaking, is your North Carolina resource for competing in the global marketplace, and we work together as a team. Uh, to answer Phil Williams' question, um, he asked earlier, uh, where are our offices? Um, we have offices in over 100 cities in the US. Um, these are our US export assistance centers. I'm in one of, one of those in central North Carolina. Um, and we work with our clients here to get to know them better, understand what their issues are and what their interests are, um, and help connect them to some of our other colleagues, including um, colleagues in our offices in 80 markets around the world. We have staff directly in 80 US embassies and consulates um, that are here to help your companies. And these staff are, are people that um, often have worked in industry before. So maybe they worked in the healthcare industry and now are working at the embassy. Maybe they worked at the Ministry of Foreign Affairs or the Ministry of Health. They know the ins and outs of reg registering a healthcare product um, and now are working at the embassy. And we have a pretty good retention rate at the embassy. So they've often been there uh, qu quite a long time. In addition to these 80 um, markets around the world where we have direct Department of Commerce staff, we also have 40 more um, markets and countries that we work in uh, staffed by our, our friends at the State Department. So 120 markets uh, representing you and, and with staff to help you do business overseas. Um, how do we do this? We do it through different types of services. And these services are, are what we'll be talking about today, but I wanted to go through them briefly so you get a little familiar with the funny names that we have for our different types of services um, as we chat about them. So um, I think our most well known is called the Gold Key. It's a matchmaking service. You're planning to travel to England in a few months. You'd like to set up meetings. We can set up three to five meetings for you in a day with companies that are interested in meeting with you. They already know about you. Our local specialist in our London office has already talked to them, given them the pitch about your uh, office and they want to meet with your company. So it's not wasting time meeting with someone you just talked to over email or a short phone conversation. That's our gold key matchmaking service. It's $950 for a small 
company. Um, we also have an international partner search. Say you're not traveling, but you'd like to have a list of companies that are interested in you. Again, where a specialist in India has already called the company, has found out that they would like to, um, to work with you. So that's our international partner search. We can even do a virtual introduction and that's about $750 for a small company. We have an initial market check. Say you're thinking about doing business in Egypt, but you've heard some issues about the currency. You'd like to know if your industry might still be doing okay and a little bit more about um, the Egyptian market. That's our initial market check. Just to go over a few other um, interesting services, we have a single company promotion. So you'd like to do an event in a country, um, uh, a reception to uh, meet a lot of your potential suppliers or your current suppliers and new potential suppliers. We do those types of events sometimes hosted at the embassy or at a nice hotel um, in that country. And uh, lastly, a popular one is the background check, which, which we more nicely call the uh, international company profile. And that's where, say, you're about to sign a big deal with a company in South Korea, but you don't know that much about them other than your interactions and what you've been able to find um, you know, through, through your background searching. We can do a full financial background check on that company, as well as go and meet with them in person, um, which they often appreciate having an embassy contact. And I, I did mention the prices and only briefly um, because a lot of those costs, all of them can be covered by, by grant money, um, which is called a step grant, something that we will talk about later in that EDPNC um, administers for you. Um, so through these services, we help US companies grow their exports and, um, and questions today and anytime are always free. Um, so so don't, don't get worried about the money part just yet. Um, however, I am not gonna be talking all day. I'm gonna be talking to, uh, with um, our experts here on the, on the line. So we're gonna do introductions and each person, each of the four speakers today is going to give you their name, where they're sitting at this moment in 30 seconds or less. Um, what they do in one sentence, and surprise question, uh, your favorite breakfast food. So since I've put everybody on the spot, I'll go first. Um, and I am Emily Jareffi. I am um, a trade specialist in Central North Carolina, and I'm currently sitting uh, in Durham, North Carolina. I've, I've already messed this up. What I do in one sentence, I, I help North Carolina companies increase their exports and my favorite breakfast food is Mexican chilaquiles. So I'm gonna turn it over to Francis, my colleague down the road in North Carolina. Francis, name, where you're sitting, what you do in one sentence, breakfast food. Hi, thanks Emily. Um, as Emily mentioned, I'm uh, her colleague with the US Commercial Service. My name is Francis Salema. I am currently sitting in my home office. My home office is in Raleigh, but I'm also with Emily in the Central North Carolina Export Assistance Center. Um, I'll need two sentences to explain what I do because I'm currently wearing two hats. One of my roles is also like Emily to advise companies in particular North Carolina companies on exporting. And uh, in my other hat that I'm wearing at the moment as the Asia team leader is to act as a resource for companies and colleagues that are interest in doing this, interested in doing business in the Asia region. Um, my favorite breakfast food, I don't think I've skipped over a question, is um, Eggs Benedict. It's not something that I make, but it's what I get when I go out for brunch or breakfast. I like it. I, I do like a good Eggs Benedict. Lydia, um, over to you. Good morning, everyone. Greetings from El Salvador, sunny El Salvador, <laughs> luckily. Um, I'm a commercial specialist here at the U.S. Embassy in El Salvador. We are the representatives of the U.S. Department of Commerce, the U.S. Commercial Service. And what we do, we provide counseling to U.S. companies, U.S. exporters that want to export your the products to El Salvador. And we can help you and assist in finding the perfect local partner for you. Um, I cover different sectors in our office, uh, healthcare, pharmaceutical, energy, environmental technologies, uh, textile and apparel. And we are three specialists uh, in our office in El Salvador. Uh, my favorite breakfast, I wouldn't be a good Salvadorian if I don't say pupusas are good Salvadorian uh, breakfast, which is our typical food. 
uh, it's a tortilla made of corn and it's filled with either cheese or beans or pork. So hopefully you will come down here and you will taste them yourself. Thank you, Lydia. You're not going to believe me, but I actually had pupusas for dinner last night. <laughs> so there you go. It is excellent food any time of day. Um, I'm going to turn it over next to our, our private sector friends that have joined us, clients of, of both the U.S. Commercial Service and um, EDPNC. And first, uh, Estella Molini, over to you. You're on mute. Unmute. Unmute. Hello, I'm uh, Stella Molini. I'm sitting in my office in Apex, North Carolina. I work with CRS Laboratories and we produce uh, research chemicals for the pharmaceutical industry to be used for their R&D and also quality control. Um, my favorite breakfast food is a combination of things because I eat a lot in the morning. So it's usually eggs, waffle, and like some kind of a yogurt parfait with granola and fruit. Which is a lot. <laughs> well, that sounds delicious, and I'm glad I already had breakfast or I'd be hungry. Byron, over to you. Um, thank you, Emily. I appreciate that. Byron Carroll here from Carroll International, our corporate headquarters sits just on the north side of the North Carolina, South Carolina border, or just above North Myrtle Beach. Um, what we do is we help and serve our clients with IT communications and software solutions. We market this out to the United States government and to our allies. My favorite breakfast is a, uh, it's a good old Southern boy. I love grits and eggs, crispy bacon. And if it's a special occasion, we'll bring some mimosas into that too. Back to you, Emily. I like it, Byron. And I am so glad I had a good breakfast this morning. Um, one more quick question to get to know our panelists today. Um, can you tell me uh, what is on or in your coffee mug and where you got it? And I will go first saying I've got my coffee mug, which is celebrating the International Trade Administration's uh, 40th anniversary in 2020. And uh, I've got coffee um, or tea actually by Aura Tea made here in North Carolina. Francis, how about you? What are you drinking this morning? Or where? what's it in? Well, I drink all the coffee. There's always coffee in my coffee cup. Um, I don't know if you can see it. Oh, it's hard to with the virtual background. Um, this is a fun cup. We actually made it for my son, my oldest son for Christmas. He is 10 and he loves comic books and he has started writing and illustrating his own comic book series called the Burrito Bros. And so we made a fun little custom coffee cup that has pictures of the um, comic book covers on it. Excellent, Francis. That sounds like an export waiting to happen. I'm just saying maybe we need to get some intellectual property rights considerations, but excellent. Uh, Lydia, over to you. Well, I have a coffee too, latte, and I have my cup. It says awesome aunt. As you know, awesome. I have like six nephews and nieces, so <laughs> I guess uh, I spoiled them a little bit. <laughs> uh, thank you very much, awesome aunt. Estella, how about yourself? Uh, mute. Oh, still on mute. Stella's computer does not. Sorry, sorry, sorry. It always no, good. So I have a mug that was, it's a custom mug, mugs made to me by my friend, one of my good friends um, as a gift for, um, I think this was for being a bridesmaid at her wedding. So oh, just has my name on it. But that's it's very kind. <laughs> that is very kind of your friend and Byron. Sure. My coffee mug is from SimTrack. It's one of our cybersecurity solutions that we market out. And what we have in here today, we're drinking some Peruvian coffee. And it always reminds me of one of the trade missions I got to attend um, in South America. So um, that's what I'm Excellent. drinking up today. I like that. I like that. Thinking about us every morning that you drink out of that coffee cup. <laughs> um, so my first question is going to be for one of my clients, Estella. Um, and Estella and I um, have, we're, we're talking right about her interests in, uh, in Latin America in different markets. And we, we decided to set up some phone calls to talk to our local experts, commercial specialists. So, um, can you tell me Estella a little bit about this, con these conversations that you had or a conversation that you had with, with a local expert from one of our U S embassies? Sure. So I think so far we've talked to uh, Brazil, Colombia, and Mexico um, in some occasions. 
Brazil's always been a focus for us. So those that, that's where we're focusing more. So that's where consequently stuff has been happening more. So we did a partner, uh, partner search there, which uh, helped us get one distributor at the time. Um, we're also talking to another distributor right now that we just got at the end of this year. Uh, and we're also planning a go to service uh, for this year in Brazil, where we're going to do an event at the embassy in Brazil and invite customers to promote the brand. Uh, so it's going to be a whole new thing. Um, that has actually happened um, or opened a lot of doors for us, especially getting this new distributor, which is like a very big and of weight in the market. Uh, so for this year, we have a lot of stuff going on, and it seems like it's going to be a big jump for our sales, which is good. That's great. And and just to, to reiterate, you know, we had these conversations with the specialists, and the specialists are, specialists are the ones that chime in and recommend to Estella, you know, the type of service we should do. We should do a partner search in Brazil for you. Um, and 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 you can move forward with that list um, instead of doing the virtual introduction since she was comfortable enough in moving forward. Um, so that makes the, the cost slightly less. It also makes the turnaround much quicker. But again, it's a conversation with these local um, experts to talk about what's the best thing for your company at that time. Um, Lydia, you are one of these local experts and you have these conversations all the, all the time with companies. Um, Estella mentioned a, a, an event in, in a country, so uh, something that sounds like a single company promotion. Can you tell us a little bit more about what is a single company promotion event and maybe an interesting single company promotion that you've done in El Salvador? So a single company promotion, it's a customized service tailored to the company needs. Uh, as Emily mentioned, one of the first things we do is have a conference call with the company, find out what are your objectives in the market. For example, it could be that you already have a distributor or you are searching for a new distributor or, cost or clients directly. Um, so we talk with you, we learn what you are trying to achieve and we do the event tailor on your needs. For example, it could be a mix of the core services that we provide and that Memily mentioned, like the one-on-one -on -one matchmaking appointments. We could do a presentation at a hotel in the morning and then do one-on-one -on -one meetings in the afternoon. Uh, it could be with potential distributors or clients. It depends on what you want. Um, we do it at a hotel, we can do it at at an office, at your distributor location, at the ambassador residence, so it depends. Uh, we have done very interesting single company promotions in El Salvador, very different. Uh, for example, once we worked with a U.S. exporter that wanted to promote uh, a software and he wanted to expand on getting more clients. So we did a reception cocktail at the end of the day at a hotel. We have also worked with U.S. exporters of cosmetic products that they already have a company here, a local distributor, and the local distributor was introducing a new brand into the market. So we prepared this launching event with them. Uh, one of the good things about the single company promotion is that we can be 100% responsible for all the logistics and all the promotion of the event, or we can do just what you need. For example, we can have a U.S. exporter telling us that, okay, I have a list of 100 people or 25 people that we would like to invite to our event, can the US Embassy send those invitations out? We can do that. Or you can tell us, organize the whole event for us, and we can also do that. So it basically depends on, on your needs. Uh, that's why it's very important to have those conversations at the beginning of, of what you are planning to do, and we can help you and let you know if a single company promotion, uh, it's the best service. Thank you very much, uh, Lydia. And for those of you that have done an event overseas or even tried to set up meetings overseas, that logistical component um, that might take you three days <laughs> um, can, can take our embassy staff a, a lot less time and can also do it more efficiently. Even, even, for example, in a gold key matchmaking where 
you might go on your own to set up three meetings and find yourself driving across the city and spending more time in the car than in the meeting, you know, our, our offices help with those logistics to ensure that what you're doing makes sense. Um, Estella, maybe um, if you could just tell us again a little more, um, you mentioned, you know, this idea of, of doing a, an event in Brazil and how that that impacted the conversation that you had um, with your potential client. Can you just tell a little bit more about how that conversation went? As you know, we've already, Estella and I have already talked to Jefferson, our specialist in Brazil, and talked about this event. And now she's going to meet with a client knowing that we might have this, that, that we're planning this perspective event. Can you tell us a little bit more about how that changed your conversation? Um, well, this is specific. Um, Distributor has a lot of business coming from the US. Uh, so it was just a really good connection and timing to do it uh, because, you know, not only it's a good fit, fit with our brand because they're also in the pharmaceutical industry, but it is also um, something that we could use to promote other US brands together. So that uh, put into conversation, not only our product, but also other products as well that we could distribute together. So not only that consolidated our uh, products that we already were talking about, but it also expanded more into other market, other products that we weren't doing at the time but we're talking about doing. So they're actually coming up here next week for further talks. So it certainly helped us a lot to have that. It's just showing, you know, uh, the things that we're doing, that we're working on, that, you know, we're not just expecting them to, as a distributor to promote our brand, but we are also working with things that will help them promote our brand in the market. Uh, and having the weight of the U.S. Embassy calling clients to call them to a meeting at the U.S. Embassy, uh, it's kind of a hard to pass on, you know, for customers in other markets. They're always interested to, uh, you know, socialize with U.S. Embassy people. So they'll show up for those meetings most likely every time. So uh, it should have a good turnout and it actually helped a lot on that conversation also to consolidate the relationship. Great, thanks so much. And and um, for all the meetings that we set up for you, our US Embassy staff is able to go with you to those meetings. Um, some clients prefer not to have them there. However, it's really great to have someone at three meetings with you throughout the day and then be able to talk to a local expert about your thoughts on how the meeting went versus you know, their perceptions on, on how the meetings went. Um, I think that uh, the US Embassy has a really great name in so many countries. If we find that our presence will not be helpful for you and our local specialists will know that, they'll tell you. If we if we find that you know it might detract from your business, that's something that we we say upfront in the conversation. But usually, as Estella pointed out, what companies in other countries like is to have that contact at the embassy, right? To be able not only that contact with you that they're making, but also they're they're getting the chance to establish a relationship with, with the U.S. Embassy. Um, I think I'm going to move down to talk about trade missions with Byron, because uh, single company promotions, I think, are really popular and something we hear a lot about. But um, trade missions is something that a lot of companies ask about and participate in. So Byron, can you tell us um, what is a trade mission? Um, why why should a company think about doing one? And uh, and maybe are are they always worth worth it from from your perspective? So Emily, thank you for that. I'll I'll start in 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 reverse. They're definitely worth it, um, and I would, I would say that it's one of the best. Um, I don't know if it's a kept secret, but it, it is definitely one of the best business maneuvers you can do if you're trying to break into the international market or you're trying to penetrate into a particular um, country or region. Um, they've been extremely um, successful uh, for our company is not only for meeting customers, but for meeting agents in that um, country, people that can represent um, our brand there and kind of be a force multiplier. So we've been on two trade missions. Um, the first one we did was into um, uh, into South America. It was the latest one that we went into and went into several countries. And, and it is like getting the uh, meetings set up for um, the gold key where they're setting up three to five meetings, but in for several countries. Uh, three of them is what we did into the, uh, the South American 
uh, market and then um, went into the Middle East um, as well and to the Middle East and went in Bahrain and Israel for that. And so you're meeting with about 10 different um, companies over a couple of days. The logistics are, are done for us. We move as a group. Um, and the hidden benefit is really the relationships that you gain with the people that are on the trade mission with you. That's super cool. I keep in contact with several of these folks to have actually um, blended our company. Semicore is one of the ones I spoke about earlier, um, the software company. We're now reselling their products internationally as well. Um, and we've gained on um, a lot of exposure. And then there's the intrinsic value that you get about just um, the pride that comes with representing the United States of America, being able to go abroad and define what a handshake means from an American. Um, and it grows our country. Um, exports are um, a way also that we can um, generate peace. You don't want to go to war. You don't want to have a, um, uh, unsuccessful relationships with people that you're doing a lot of trade with. So um, myself as a veteran, I see it as, as an additional way that I'm serving my country. And I'm really happy that I was introduced to this and the trade missions that we've gone on have been really well and, and well put together. Back to you, Emily. Thank you so much, Byron. So with, with these trade missions, it's similar to, to a gold key where you're getting mm -hmm. these one-on-one -on -one meetings with clients that are interested in meeting with you with the added benefit that there's nine other companies or so mm -hmm. um, also on the trip doing the same thing during the day. And at night, you get to talk to them about their experiences and their one-on-one -on -one meetings, learn from the questions that they asked. Um, Often the, uh, the trade missions can be um, executive led. So there might be a um, executive from the Department of Commerce or another agency on the trade mission and always um, a lot of staff from the Department of Commerce there um, to, to answer questions. So um, yeah, I, I, it's, it's really nice to hear from a company perspective about, about trade missions. Um, Melissa, I would love to ask you about trade shows. And, and as I do ask my question, if anyone has participated in a trade mission and would like to share in the chat or has any questions about trade missions or single company promotions, please feel free to, to raise your hand, turn on your mic, ask a question or, or ask in the chat. But um, as you're thinking of your questions or your things to share, um, Melissa, trade shows, you just came back from a trade show. I'd, I'd love to hear which one it was um, about your experience there and uh, and maybe some of the advantages of participating in a trade show. Sure, I'm gonna um, touch on just- Oh, you're on mute, Melissa. Back on mute, okay, it was off for a second. Um, just so everyone knows, we'll try to save the last 15 minutes of the call to really open it up to Q&A. So I'll try to keep this brief, but I do wanna talk about trade shows as well as synergies between the US commercial service tools and EDPNC's offerings. Um, so the most recent trade show I was at was um, Arab Health, and there was a U.S. commercial service presence there. Um, I really want to highlight um, uh, when the U.S. commercial service has um, uh, quite a large presence, as they did at uh, as they do at Medica. Um, so uh, my first trade show with EDPNC, I started in the fall. Um, I was absolutely blown away by U.S. Uh, commercial service, not only their presence, but um, their efficacy in guiding people in markets that go far, far, far beyond where the trade show is at. Um, just a very quick example for you. I had the opportunity to sit in um, a meeting with a North Carolina company that was not even in our booth. That were just walking the show. I was just trying to plug in everybody I could with U.S. commercial service and their pavilion. They have a whole pavilion at Medica as they do at a lot of other trade shows. And they bring in delegates from embassies all over the world. So at this particular trade show, I think they had approximately 15 delegates. So your, your foreign service nationals that were probably born and raised in that country, if not, they've lived in that country for decades. Um, and so they have um, uh, a, an expert level of the business um, processes, best practices and industries. Um, and our North Carolina company sat at a table with three different representatives. And the only reason why it wasn't one-on-one -on -one is because this company didn't set up appointments in advance, but the US commercial service still fit them in. And it was just fascinating because um, um, one representative, she was from uh, uh, the embassy in Vietnam, heard their pitch, and she immediately said, don't bother. 
Don't bother to try to bring your product into our market because it's just not going to fit. It's not a good fit for our market. What a time saver, right? So that company, they were really interested in the market, but they were they were probably saving themselves months of research or effort when it was just not going to be a good fit. However, right next to her, there was a representative from Azerbaijan. They would never have thought that that market would have been good. And she said, this is a perfect product for our market. I strongly encourage you to stay in touch with me. Let's talk. Um, she really thought that the people in their sector would welcome that, that product wholeheartedly and be really excited about it. Um, and, and so it was just, what a great experience. And so even if you're at a trade show, always check and see if the US Commercial Service is going to be there plug in with them. And yes, your focus might be on that particular market where phys that physical trade show is located, but you can gain knowledge and um, depth um, for your uh, strategy that goes far beyond that by plugging into U.S. Commercial Service. So my plug is always check when you're doing a trade show to see if the U.S. Commercial Service is going to have any type of presence. Um, they might even just be having some briefings about markets, um, even if they don't have a huge delegation. But plug in, reach out to your North Carolina uh, representatives and check every time you have a trade show because you never know. Um, and then I just want to quickly point out the synergies between EDP and C's program and U.S. Commercial Service. Um, we do have um, six foreign offices, EDP and C does, where we offer some free services that have some overlap uh, with what the U.S. Commercial Service does. So um, I, as a representative of our international trade team, would encourage you to reach out to myself, to Blake, to Cool Deep, um, Glenn, and Mike um, initially, because we can plug you in with um, our foreign office if we have a, a, a representative that covers um, the market that you're trying to reach out to and have that initial conversation with our offices. Um, we engage with um, global um, consultants that are experts in their markets and they're living in the regions as well. And so they can initiate uh, market intelligence research for you um, and some, some similar partner searches. But then the U.S. Commercial Service is always there for you um, to take it even further. And the U.S. Commercial Service, of course, um, covers um, much more broadly around the globe than, um, than we can. But start with us and we'll plug you in with your um, U.S. Commercial Service representative um, as well. And um, then we also, as part of our grant offerings, we can help um, alleviate some of the costs of the U.S. Commercial Service fees. But honestly, their fees are extremely, extremely reasonable for the what you get. Um, and um, so nothing but a win-win if you engage with U.S. Commercial Service. Thank you so much, Melissa. And I'd love to talk a little bit more about trade shows with, with Francis and Lydia, uh, my colleagues. Um, and Francis, uh, Lydia, uh, maybe second can talk a little bit about her perspective from doing some of the, the counseling that Melissa was talking about. But Francis, um, we have global teams and global team members that participate in a lot of these shows. Um, can you tell us first maybe a little bit about who these global teams are, what they are that we have, and who is on the teams and, and why they matter and what they do? Sure. Yeah. Thanks, Emily. Um, yeah. So we have global teams. They are primarily an internal structure within the U.S. Commercial Service. What Emily said at the outset is, you know, that we are a very vast organization. So we have over 100 offices in the U.S. We have a very large presence in D.C. at headquarters and then all of our international offices. So the global teams serve as a structure for us to internally pool our resources and to deliver programming that is most effective. So we have teams that cover a variety of different industries and regions. So globally, we have people on, for example, an automotive and smart mobility team, an environmental team, a healthcare team. We have a marine technology team. There's a team for every industry. I think we have close to 20 of them. We also have regional teams, and that's where I'm currently serving as the Asia team leader. And again, what these teams are is an internal pooling of resources. So people like myself who sit in the U.S. field and who cover specific industry sectors or who work with clients that are interested in certain regions, it allows us to collaborate 
on programming. And one of the major programs that comes out of the teams are these trade events and trade missions. So when Melissa was talking about the programming at um, Medica, I think it was, right? Um, that was a program that was coordinated and delivered by our healthcare team. Coincidentally, our healthcare global healthcare team leader is located here in North Carolina. She's based out of our Charlotte office. And likewise, our global automotive and smart mobility team leader is also in North Carolina. So we have a very strong team lead. Oops, sorry, I'm getting some feedback. Um, I think we're okay now. Um, very strong team presence in North Carolina. Um, so for you as a company, you may not see our internal team's structure, um, but what it does is it allows us to deliver these trade programs and trade missions. The, the, the one place where you would have would benefit and where you do have visibility into our global teams as an outside entity is in our newsletters. So each team puts together a company facing newsletter. Most of them are monthly. Some of them are bi-monthly. It just depends on the team and the amount of activity that's going on. Um, and they, you know, put together a really nice snapshot of everything that's happening either in that industry or in that region for the month. So it would include information on our upcoming trade shows that we're supporting, or if there are any specific trade missions that are being coordinated. Um, it, and so, as Melissa said, if you're going to a trade show and you want to know if we have programs being offered at that show, the newsletter would be one way to find out. Of course, just calling and asking us would be another way, but you can sort of inter you can monitor on your own via the newsletters. And also, and this might be something we touch on a little bit later, but there are also trade leads that are listed in the newsletter. And there's also market research that is linked in the newsletter. So the latest, you know, market um, industry information that's being put out by our overseas offices is also linked in the newsletter. Um, well, thank, thank you. Thank yeah, you very much, Francis. So um, to uh, answer Linda's question from the chat about where we can find a list of trade shows, so let's say you're my client, Linda, and say you happen to be in manufacturing. Um, feel free to put in the chat what, what industry sector you are in. Um, I, I may not know all the trade shows that are available in manufacturing, um, not only in the US, right, but around the world. Say you're interested in doing a trade show in, in Mexico, I would reach out to the manufacturing team to my Mexican colleagues that are on the manufacturing and team and say, my client, Linda Bernard, would really like to go to a trade show in Mexico. This is her industry focus. Which one do you recommend? So those are the types of conversations where I, we can reach out through our internal team um, to answer uh, your, your questions. And another point I, we haven't made yet, um, but we always like to, is there is no wrong door. So say you were on a presentation that our team lead Pam Plagans out of Texas is giving and you email Pam and you say, I really want to go to a trade show. I'm in North Carolina. No wrong door, right? She's going to refer you to me as your um, as your lead in North Carolina or maybe um, you know, you, you're on a call with Melissa and, and Melissa and I have a conversation about what we think is the best trade show for you to go to as we reach out. Um, to to these um, resources um, that have been mentioned, and I'll uh, I know we don't have too much time before we're going to open it up, but I do I do want to um, have um, Lydia talk a little bit about from the perspective of one of our export experts counseling at a trade show. Um, what do you see as as the benefits for a U.S. company coming to a trade show? What what kind of services do our, our local teams provide to U.S. companies at, at trade shows? Thank you, Emily. Um, I think one of the most important things that you have that face-to-face -face interaction at a trade show. Um, you can have that counseling, as Melissa was mentioning, we can tell you if your, com if your product has a potential in the local market or not. We can save you a lot of time. Um, and as my colleague was mentioning about the global teams, we, they put together a Showtime program, which means that us as 
counseling experts from different countries, we go to the shows and we visit US companies that are exhibiting at the show or that are attending the show uh, and our domestic office knows that they, are, they want to export. So we coordinate meetings ahead of time. So we can do those at the show. That's one of the great benefits. Also, if you let our domestic colleagues, uh, our trade specialist experts that you are attending a show, they will let you know which delegations are coming over. And they can let us know, oh, look, I have this US company interested in a, in a local partner in El Salvador. Do you think one of your delegates that are coming to the show can be a good partner for them? And you, we can arrange a meeting ahead of time. So I think those are one of the best uh, benefits of attending these type of events. Great. Thank you. Thank you so yeah. much. Um, we'd really love to open it up to questions. Um, so if anyone has a question, um, feel free to unmute yourself and ask the question. Feel free to put it in the chat if that is easier. Um, and uh, of course, feel free to, to email afterwards if, if asking a question right now um, isn't, isn't for you. Um, but as we wait for some questions to come into the chat, um, I'm going to just show our website uh, briefly as everyone gets their questions ready. Um, and, I, and I would also encourage people, if you don't have questions, but you have engaged with US Commercial Service before, to offer your experience as well. Yes, thank you, Melissa. Um, so just um, very quickly on our website, we did have a question um, about if you are, if you're new to exporting, um, where can you go? So here on our website, you see uh, for U.S. businesses, export solutions, um, new to exporting, here you go. You can learn how to export. There are tons of videos, um, articles on, you know, the, the first steps of exporting. In addition, both um, our offices and EDPNC constantly do webinars um, focused on the different uh, different topics related to exporting. The second thing I'm going to talk about for our website, I'm only going to talk about two because I could spend all day on this website, is our country commercial guide. So I'm going to go to research by country in the research center here. And um, and so for these, these country commercial guides, we did um, have a question uh, from uh, Bruce Baker about uh, free trade agreements. Bruce, you could click here and learn about the different free trade agreements. I'm actually going to go to our country commercial guides section here. Um, I know Brian Newton mentioned they're interested in expanding in Europe, so you could pick a country commercial guide from Europe. Um, but we are going to go with, with Brett McCoy's interest in the Western Hemisphere. He said he just landed a uh, distributor in Costa Rica. And uh, let's say you're looking for somewhere else, we'll go with Mexico and, and your manufacturing company. And Brett, if I have it correct, I think it is, is it bicycles, huck cycles, is that right? Um, but anyway, let's say we're, we're, you're interested in doing business in Mexico. Um, what will this country commercial guide tell you? First, it is written by local specialists like Lydia, um, reviewed by, I think everybody, reviewed by our <laughs> colleagues at the State Department, reviewed by our colleagues in headquarters that cover those countries, the US Trade Representative's Office, which is the White House, everybody reviews these, but they're updated yearly and have um, information that you need on doing business in Mexico. You need to know about selling your US products and services. If you click, um, on the arrow here, you can see all the different types of subchapters. Each of these subchapters is available in every single country commercial guide. So I'm looking at Mexico, but we could equally be looking at South Africa and find the same information. Distribution channels, say you're interested in signing an agent. What does it mean to have an agent in Mexico versus in South Africa versus in Egypt? How, how do those differ, right? And, and is that a viable selling channel? Um, say you have specific questions on customs, regulations, and standards. Um, I love this section, <laughs> but there's a lot of information here um, that you can find uh, right off the shelf related to export controls, tariffs, documentation needed. Those are the only two things I'm going to say so that you don't forget any of them, country commercial guide and, and new to export. Um, so if again, if anyone has any questions, please please feel free to chime in. Um, 
if yeah. I can add if I can add something, Emily, um, yeah. since there was someone else asking about the free trade agreement, also it's good that you reach out to us because we can let you know how from where products are being imported, not only from the US, through your harmonized tariff code, we can see what are the benefits through the free trade agreement. Um, at least for Central America, we have a Central America free trade agreement and Dominican Republic known as CAFTA DR. So we can let you know what are the benefits to import that product under CAFTA uh, and how to work with your local importer distributor to get that benefit. Because some free trade agreements are different. Uh, case of CAFTA, the benefit has to be requested by the importer of the product. And Lydia, actually, while you're talking, Francis mentioned um, we have newsletters and that in those newsletters, you can get information such as events for trade shows, but you can also get trade leads. Can you tell us a little bit about what a trade lead is and why someone might want to sign up for our newsletter so they could get a trade lead? So trade lead, it's when a local company reach out to our office and let us know they are looking for a U.S. Uh, manufacturer or provider of a specific product. So what we do, we fill out a form that the teams have. They let us know what type of product. It could be anything. It could be vitamins. It could be uh, medical equipment. It could be uh, energy efficiency uh, product or environmental technology, anything, auto parts. Uh, so the local company let us know specifically what they're looking for. We share that information with our US expert assistance centers in the US. And, their share, and they share the information in the newsletters that goes out every month, or they can also have top of mind your company and they say, oh, this is good for my client. And they forward that uh, trade lead to you directly. And when we do the match and we find a US exporter that wants to follow that lead, uh, we can do virtual introductions with the local company. And then you, you can uh, make discussions about pricing and all all the other conditions. Great, yeah, thanks so much. I think that's a, a great reason too to be in touch with your local US Export Assistance Center is as we're getting these trade leads, I know I've sent a bunch to Estella. They're not always exactly in her very niche sector, but the other part is she can forward them on to colleagues that, that might um, you know, be in a, a parallel sector to hers as well. So again, these are vetted leads where, where we know that there's an opportunity in a foreign country and we pass them on to you. Um, Looks like and, we had a request for the link to gain access to the industry newsletters. Sure, um, we, will, we can send that um, in a follow-up email to everyone that registered um, mm -hmm. the industry newsletters as well as a few of this, the main points that we've talked about today. Um, I, and I know there were a few comments in the chat about um, about trade shows and Byron, you talked about trade missions, um, but I know you've also done a few trade shows. It'd be great to hear from, from the company perspective, um, the benefit of going to a, a trade show. Yeah, so the trade shows, so much of the work is done for you. Um, it's a phenomenal team uh, that put together the trade show packages. And also you get to work with the consultants that are in country to help set meetings up for you there. And plus, um, it's there's grants that can help you with it. Um, so we've been able to um, to go to uh, Paris and to Millipold um, since out our industry. And actually, we're leaving out in just a couple of weeks to go to IDEX and Abu Dhabi. And a cool dip and I will be there together. And uh, in the the grant funds, there's definitely a process to go through with that. And there's a um, you know ways to do it. But you got a team around you that's helping you. And I guess that would be my biggest advice to any of the uh, the folks, uh, the business people that are on the line that are considering this or, or um, on the fence of doing it. Uh, be bold, be brave. The world wants to do business with you. You have got all the resources in the world. Um, most of them are represented here on this call. Um, we are set up for success as business people to go out there and to uh, make the contacts to do business internationally. Um, it is a very, very good thing to do. And I've said this many times, and, I, and it just keeps ringing true. Um, exporting is where the government of the United States has got wind in your sails. Normally, they're an anchor on your tail, but not in exporting. In exporting, they were definitely going to push you forward. So use your team. These folks are very, very professional, knowledgeable professionals that are inside this world that are hold your hand and get you up to speed on it. So uh, use your resources. I've been blessed to have some of the best ones um, working around me and, um, and go for it. You'll enjoy it, and it's a patriotic thing to do. Back to you. 
Thank you, Byron. And yes, as, as I said at the beginning, um, the US Commercial Service is your US government resource for competing in the global marketplace. Um, and, and your North Carolina resource, EDPNC, administers these grants that we've been talking so, so much about. Um, Melissa, the STEP grant, State Trade Expansion Program grant, we've mentioned it a few times. It's a long acronym. Does that mean it's like a really long, complicated application process that no one really wants to go through? Well, we, well, we're a smaller organization. So for us, unlike um, uh, your organization, which is extremely large, uh, we're, we're small. So your relationship will start with your international trade manager. So you'll go to our website and figure out who is your industry appropriate contact. And then we have um, a grants manager. So all of your correspondence will go between okay. those two people. So only two people. And it runs every fiscal year. Um, so October 1st of each year is when the new fiscal funds for the grant offerings um, become available. Um, each year we do um, a webinar. You just need to stay plugged in. My advice would be um, before the new fiscal year starts um, each year. So really every summer, you should start to think about your export strategy and you should plug in with your representative at EDPNC, um, get that strategy together to minimize any hiccups along the way. Um, and so that you're very, very clear on the new fiscal year procedures. Things change just a little bit each year as we kind of recalibrate um, you know, who we're servicing and um, how we can reach as many companies as possible, but still meet our uh, goals for the federal government. We receive the step funds from the U.S. federal government, and then we are responsible for making sure that we're using those funds in the best way possible to achieve success for our North Carolina companies and for our markets. Thank you. And uh, yes, uh, what I heard was free money, and I know recently you have uh, updated and, and made it easier for companies to put all their information in online for the STEP grant, um, so definitely something to take advantage of as you're looking at these services that we've talked about today and heard from, from Lydia in El Salvador and Francis, my colleague down, down the road in North Carolina, as well as two excellent examples, um, Byron and Estella, of North Carolina companies that are taking advantage, using Using these services and and growing their exports, that's that's it from uh, from us today. So Melissa, thank and, you for yeah, thank, I'll, thank I'll you, you so much, everybody, for taking the time. It's such a wealth of information, and um, so you, you the the resources are available in the chat. We will also our marketing team at EDPNC will be sending out. Um, a recap, including the recording. So anything that um, Emily and the U.S. Commercial C, uh, U.S. Commercial team would like to put in um, to recap, um, we'll include that, including some probably links that were um, asked for. Uh, just a plug for next month's topic, we will be taking um, a deep dive into. Um, uh, the one of our foreign offices region. We'll be talking with our office that's in Germany. They'll be doing a deep dive on Germany and then some of the um, surrounding areas. So uh, just start thinking about your questions for best practices in that particular market, which will come next month. So thank you again to everyone. Um, and if we missed um, uh, addressing a question, um, my email address is in the chat. Feel free to reach out to myself, to Emily, or anyone else. We'll be glad to, to get your, uh, your questions answered. Thanks so much for joining.